What are the two greatest things to ever happen to humanity? I'm sure there is a couple of good answers to this question actually like donuts and electricity for example or cheese and the wheel but for us it's definitely cats and video games. Seriously though, can we just take a moment to appreciate our feline friends? Like, what did we do to even deserve these little guys? They're just so cute and independent and adorable and I love them. So we thought why not combine our two loves? Searching for cat on the eShop turns up some interesting results, but fear not as we've waded through the shovelware and strange jigsaw puzzles to bring you some of the best cat ventures on the Switch. We're also going to be consulting our resident feline expert, Miso. Even if you're not a cat person, we think there's a wide enough variety of games here to suit anyone's tastes. And we've saved arguably the best ones for last, so make sure you stick around until the end. So hit that subscribe button, nuzzle into that like button, and let's talk about some of God's greatest creatures. Cats! <laughs> alright, alright, so hear me out. Stardew Valley, but with cats. Right? If you're not already in love with the idea, then you're probably a bit of a psychopath. Which actually would work in your favour because you won't bawl your eyes out at the start of this game. That's right, I'm a man and I'm willing to admit that I cried at the start of Cat Tales. I did. That's okay. So the game starts off with a seemingly innocent and heartwarming story of a little girl who gets her first kitten. Everything is all sunshine and rainbows until the mum gets annoyed at the cat for some reason or another and decides to drive out into the middle of nowhere and dump it on the side of the road. Which is an absolutely horrible thing to do by the way, and if you were to ever do it, then you're a literal piece of human garbage. But I digress. Your life as a sheltered house cat might be over, but your new chapter is just beginning. Soon you'll bump into a kitty named Coco, and thank God for Coco, as he offers you the choice of moving into either the mountain, the forest, or the mystic tribe, where you will make your new name. Cat Tales is a sort of blend between Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, in the sense that you're able to do whatever you want, whenever you want to do it. There is a good narrative to follow, but a lot of the secrets and lore of Cat Tales is found by exploring on your own terms, rather than the story guiding you towards it. Making it one of those quintessential cozy games, where it doesn't seem like there's much to do, but there's actually everything to do. Whether you want to complete the temple, explore the mines, fight local tribes for power, or hit on any of the marriageable kitty cats, <laughs> there is always something to do in Cat Tales. Don't get too carried away with whatever it is you're doing though, because you always have to make sure you hunt for food in between. Because if you don't eat, you die. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Understandable. Cat Tales is a super fun and cute little survival simulation game, and it's often on sale for as low as $2. Right now it's 50% off until the 30th of April, so it is the perfect time to pick this one up. So Miso, what do you think of Cat Tales? Oh, it's that good is it buddy? Okay, so this game was like 8 bucks that I bought on a whim one day and it actually exceeded all of my expectations. Initially I was drawn to the Ori-like art style and soundtrack of Wengia, but what really drew me in was the super unique dimension changing ability that this little kitty has. So you're able to change dimensions whenever you want, revealing new paths or platforms that you need to traverse the levels. Switching worlds is really smooth and sometimes you even have to do it mid-jump to make it through the level safely. Both worlds are incredibly beautiful and flicking to each one is super satisfying and can be quite challenging. The only downsides to Engia are that it's pretty short, it's only like 3-4 to four hours long and I honestly could have played it for like 20. And there is one more downside to the game which is honestly quite a shame because it really brings the score down quite a lot. And that's the typos. So the story is delivered through subtitles when you reach certain points throughout the game, and there are a few typos. 
Some of them you can look past, but others just make the sentences kind of hard to decipher and it just really breaks you out of the zone, if you know what I mean. It's a pretty simple mistake in an otherwise perfect game, in my opinion, that does take away a little bit from the story. But overall, that's the only real con to a beautiful game. If you're the developer of Wangir, like, hit, hit us, us up, up, man. I <laughs> would love to translate for you. <laughs> we'll fix your typos. It's all good. Even Miso struggled to understand the typo, didn't you, Miso? Didn't you? Between the cats, obviously, the adorable pixel art, and the fact that this game won the MWU Indie Awards in Korea in 2019, A Street Cat's Tale is a pretty good bet if you're looking for a cozy little cat venture. I don't know what it is with these cat games and their apparent need to make us cry. Like, I just want to love all the cats. I don't want them to be by themselves. Give them to me. Give them. After yet another heartbreaking intro, you find yourself alone on the streets. It's a tough world out there, especially for a little kitten. So at the beginning, you'll mostly busy yourself with not dying, hunting, and improving your shelter, which once upgraded will give you health boosts for the following playthroughs. A Street Cat's Tale is a very short game with multiple endings to unlock, so you're gonna wanna play through it a bunch of times. It's your actions in these playthroughs that will determine who your new adopted parents will be, or if you'll just die a heartbreaking death on the street alone. <laughs> the runs are short enough to keep you interested in unlocking the next heartwarming or heartbreaking ending. Even though the runs can become quite repetitive and sometimes require having the same conversations multiple times, the game is big enough to experience something new each time you play through. No reaction. Cat lateral damage re -mialsted, or as I've affectionately nicknamed it, Asshole Cat Simulator, isn't the most mind-blowing game that you'll ever play, but it was far too hilarious to not put it on this list. You basically roll around your owner's house and try to destroy as many things as possible. You do have a list of commands for every level, which you will need to complete before you can unlock the next area to dismantle, and there is actually a lot of them. Each cat has about 10 levels, and there is about 10 cats. So there's more than enough content to let your inner demons out for as long as they need to release all of your inner angst. The tasks mainly include things like knock over 25 plants, kill a certain number of mice, or cause over 10 grand's worth of damage. The tasks are simple enough, but each level might take a couple of tries to complete all of them before the timer runs out. You are a cat after all, and all of this property damage can get quite tiring, so you do only have a certain amount of time to get in as much damage as possible before you fall asleep. Cat lateral damage is the perfect way to release some of that pent up frustration that you have after a long day at work, or maybe just to embrace your inner asshole. Either way, it is always hilarious and you can definitely count on this game for some good old mindless fun. Honestly, it just sounds so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is ridiculous. I love it. Are you an asshole kitty to me, so? Yes, because he doesn't care. Hunter's Legacy is probably the least cozy game on this list, but it is still very much cat orientated, and it was just too good to leave behind. Also, what even is cozy? We've heard people refer to Metroid Dread as cozy, and for us, that game is a straight up fear inducing wave of anxiety. There are no right or wrong answers here. Cozy is more of a feeling rather than an actual genre. We actually use Metroid Dread as the example because Hunter's Legacy is a Metroidvania, a non-linear action platformer popularized by the Metroid and Castlevania series. This genre is notorious for having quite the high difficulty level. However, Hunter's Legacy is probably the easiest game in this genre that I've played, further cementing its place in this cozy little video. Players control Icky, a feline drawn to the kingdom of Iriper for a seemingly unknown reason. 
Iki soon discovers Iroperos on the brink of war, and with their saviour, the legendary hunter, missing, Iki takes on the task of protecting the realm from Moradir and his goblin forces. As is standard with Metroidvanias, Iki will come across a variety of weapons and skills along the way that allow players to reach previously inaccessible sections of the map. For me, there's something about getting to an obstacle and thinking, how the hell am I supposed to do this? And then trying at it and failing like a hundred times, only to progress the story a bit more, getting something like a double jump, and then it becomes obvious that, you know, you just, just meant to double jump. Yeah, I'm a bit of a masochist. Now it is the perfect edition of Hunter's Legacy that is available on the Switch. And while we never played the imperfect edition, it's apparently done a lot to right some of the issues the game had initially, so it's probably worth checking out again. If you enjoyed games like Ori or Hollow Knight, or just enjoyed the idea of them and found the whole experience a little bit frustrating, then we highly recommend checking out Hunter's Legacy Perfect Edition. Honestly, I think he's just getting sick of me annoying him. I might be speaking for myself here, but I honestly think that Kataria Fables is the best game on this list. It's a surprisingly deep RPG with an engaging combat system and light farming elements that definitely nails it in the cuteness department. I mean, come on, it only takes one look at Timmy the Chinchilla or whatever this marshmallow looking thing is to feel all warm and fuzzy inside. It's not a cuteness overload though. There is a nice balance from the mysterious overtone of the story as you slowly uncover the secrets of magic and why it was banned by the government. Kataria Fables has a decent emphasis on combat. Think more Rune Factory rather than Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon. And part of your mission to uncover the truth about magic is to explore the dungeons surrounding the town. They all involve clearing a couple of floors and then defeating a mini boss. The difficulty does jump pretty fast from pretty easy to this boss is going to kill you if it looks at you, which does encourage you to upgrade your weapons and armor. These can be upgraded in town using monster bits and a decent wad of cash, each of which can be earned by exploring, completing tasks for townspeople and defeating monsters. And of course, no cozy game is complete without farming. Farming in Kataria Fables is a really good way to earn money for weapon upgrades, as well as relaxing. There's just something about farming in video games that's so therapeutic, and the addition of farming in this game fits the whole vibe really well. The art style of Kataria Fables is vibrant and charming, and the soundscape is really quite remarkable. It's such a lighthearted and fun adventure that you can lose hours in and I definitely highly recommend picking it up if you have the chance. And here we are, the last game on the list and as promised, also the best. In fact, it was actually the inspiration for this entire video, Cat Quest 1 and 2. Yeah, we argued about whether it was going to be Cat Quest or Kataria Fables and A1. Now we have decided to group both Cat Quest together here, mainly because they are available to buy together in the Pawsome Double Pack, and also because they are both just such adorable little gems and both worthy of a playthrough. You don't necessarily have to play number one in order to understand what's going on in number two. For the most part, it's a standalone story with just a couple of Easter eggs to the first one. But when they are available in a double pack like this, why wouldn't you pick both of them up? So when I say open world action RPG, most people instantly think of something like Elden Ring or Breath of the Wild. But Cat Quest proves that this genre of game is just so varied. They couldn't be further from something like Elden Ring, but undoubtedly fall into the same category. See what I did there? Cat. Agree? Alright, I'll stop now. <laughs> the first game in the series is a pretty standard venture into the open world RPG genre, and pretty in line with what you'd expect from a first effort from an indie developer. In fact, it actually pokes fun at itself for being so generic. When you encounter Dracoth, the main villain for the first time, it's even stated that he's such a generic villain because they are easy to hate. 
However, this is all just a guise for a surprisingly in-depth story with many twists and turns. By the end of it, you almost end up sympathizing with Dracoth, and he is most definitely not just another generic villain. The main story is fantastic here, but as usual with these type of games, the side quests contribute greatly to the world building. You'll have to do at least some of them in order to level up for the main story, and I think you'll find you'll want to do a bunch more of them, just to see how the story plays out, and to learn more about the land of Falangard. Most of these side quests are fetch quests or kill this thing quests, which again, the game pokes fun at itself about, but they are entertaining nonetheless. Cat Quest 2 shakes up the concept of the first game just enough for it to feel interesting and new, but also comfortable and familiar. The main difference is the obvious inclusion of a dog companion and the ability to either swap between these characters on the fly or to play the entire thing in local co-op. Considering there's two of us here, this was a more than welcome inclusion. With the advent of online multiplayer, we feel like Catch Co-op has taken a back seat in gaming in recent years, and that's honestly a bit of a shame. The writing in both Cat Quest games is hilarious, wearing its inspirations proudly on its sleeves and unapologetically hitting you with cat pun after cat pun. You'll encounter a treasure hunter named Karoloff, which I just found way funnier than it probably should have been. And the local blacksmith is named Kit. Kit Cat. There's just such a pawsome cat venture to be had here. If there was an award for the number of cat puns in a single media, Cat Quest would win it paws down. I didn't stop. I could honestly bang on about these games for ages, but hopefully I've gotten my point across that they are super fun and most definitely worth your time. Real-time combat, fantastic writing, and an absolutely beautiful art style that truly brings the world to life. Is there anything not to love here? Oh, and cats. So many cats. Cat Quest is your favourite though, isn't it Miso? Yes, there is, it's my favourite. You'd think we'd be all catted out after the research for today's video, but honestly, after this is done, I'm just gonna go hug my little guy. Obviously not all of us can be cat people, but we think we've included enough games here for there to be something for those dog lovers too. Or for the rabbit lovers, or for the bird people, whatever animal is your favourite. Let us know in the comments below if you are fond of any of these titles or if you have any cat game recommendations for us. You can never have too many cats. You can never have too many cats. <laughs> Don't forget to put your paws on those like and subscribe buttons and hit that bell so your little fella doesn't catch any birds. <sighs> Alright, that's way too many cat puns for one video. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>